in essence, it's really part of the triune God. If you go back and you do your due diligence and you study Bible and you realize it was there in the beginning when the Creator was there, even before the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible, and the Word word itself was spoken into the water to produce everything in the universe, according to the Bible. We now work with the world's leading physicists and biochemists and the uh, biophysicists and mathematicians, and we've got it all figured out how the Creator actually creates that way, through hydrosonic creationism, using love, frequency 528, to literally vibe us, even at this moment, into existence. So to, if that's creation, if that's mathematics is how you create, prayer is this math. There's a frequency vibration to prayer. In fact, that warm, fuzzy feeling in your heart when you're in love and you're in really love joy. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I've been... 528. That's what I've been that's telling right. people, that, that feeling that you get, that wonderful feeling. That's what the true prayer is. But that's what I've been trying to tell people. This is the energy you need to put into the field. And this is how you affect everybody else around you. And it, you, 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 you charge the field with that energy so people can draw that into themselves to help create their reality as well. There's, oh, um, brother, man, are you right on. That, you must be a Levitical priest or something very high because for the, you to have that knowledge, that is a profound understanding I just download this stuff, Len. I, I don't know where it comes from, a lot of it. I just download it into me, and then I research it, and I find out it's all true. So I, this is a lot of what the message that I've been getting out to people. So this is something else you can also get into, and people you know can get into, is, is 10 p.m. every Saturday, Greenwich Mean Time, that is. So every, you work it out around the world, wherever you are. 10 p.m., Greenwich Mean Time, there will be thousands and thousands of people putting that energy into the field. It's happening every Saturday night. It's actually Sunday mornings for me so um that's something else we can get into i'll put a link to that um to that living or that live water i'll put that on my website tonight when we when we finish this yeah and when you email me you must have a, a banner for your organization i'll post that right up on live h2o.org and that will unite our organizations in this heartfelt loving intention to bring about peace on earth world health and universal prosperity in all ways and that is our inheritance. That's our innate endowment that we have the capacity to do that, to, to create, co-create that. Oh, absolutely. So, I absolutely believe that. And that's just why I started this intention. It's, uh, it's wonderful to, to get you on board with that. Actually, that, that's great. And it would be definitely great to get this, um, this whole thing united into one thing. Yeah. And there's two groups, to my knowledge, in Australia advancing venues for the three-day event. It's the 19th of June through the 21st with a culmination on the 21st. Now, just because you're into this, I'm going to share with you and your audience an extraordinary revelation that came just a couple weeks ago. You know, the Mayan calendar ends on 2012, December 21st precisely, 2012. And the book of Revelation 13, the chapter 13 in the book of Revelation, deals completely with what we're talking about here. It deals with ousting the beast, the Babylonian beast, the petrochemical pharmaceutical cartel, and their manipulation of the hydrated population. Because you have to understand, 80% of your body is nearly all that's water. And that's the same amount approximately that the earth is covered with water and that the beast is in it now. The pollution, the degradation, the degeneration of the liquid crystal superconductor, the universal solvent, water, that's do, re, mi, fa, so, solve, pollute in Latin, solve the problem, solve the pollution in English, we're about to solve the pollution of the Babylonian beast infesting our waters using the universal language, music, that heartfelt loving frequency we now know is 528 hertz, and we've got the world's most conscious musicians retuning their instruments for that weekend, and then to produce ultimately the universal healer, love to resonate the waters, all the waters with 528 hertz frequency, and that's going to create a global baptism. It's going to create a, a 
the oceans turning into a love potion, if you will, or they, a homeopathic that vibrates with the love of humanity's heart marrying this magnificent superconductor, the juice of the universe, the creative juice of the universe, part of the triune God, the water, to produce lasting peace on earth because we're destined to have it and it's prophesied to have it. A thousand years of world peace is what's on tap for us right now. And so if you're in the flow, then you're literally into the creative consciousness and the frequency resonance of love and of moving us powerfully, creatively, into this realm whereby we don't have these global industrialists polluting, poisoning, degrading, degenerating, intoxicating, not just humanity, but virtually all the species and this magnificent gem of a planet. We must come out of that lunacy and hypocrisy. We must transition into what is in our hearts a vision of the way it can be and shall be that's far more sane. So this is what we're joining together. So it's Friday is about edutainment, education, uplifting the congregation, the public into this understanding that we now have everything we need from the science realm even, the scriptural realm, the native aboriginal realms. All of these prophets and seers and wise ones are with us. And the most advanced scholars in the fields of mathematics and physics and biophysics are with us. And like you, you, we have already the organizations that are established internationally to advance the most powerful creative force in the universe, and that is prayer, spoken word, and vision, inner image and vision of a better way to be in our heartfelt loving intention to co-create that together as one divine human family. Absolutely. That, that is just so wonderful to hear that. That's that's. Absolutely, absolutely true, and I believe we can do it. I mean, I know we can do it. I know that this is the secret to the whole thing. It's the key. And you're right, we've got everything here at our disposal to be able to do that sort of thing. Now, getting back to um, some other things that are going on with the world, I've been explaining to people um, a lot about all this food that they're making us eat. I'm trying to let people know that when you genetically modify food, you, you know, when you alter food on a genetic level, you're also altering those who consume it. At a genetic level, and um, like you know, you, you you put it all together with the with the chemtrails, with the food additives, the GMO food, all of the stuff we're doing. I mean, it really appears that what we have here is a plan to genetically alter the human race, kind of a quiet eugenics program hidden in plain sight. Um, yeah, let's let let me get back to the second part of your question, which you're dealing with now, which deals with the genetics. And you had asked, well, what is this really about? What are the chemtrails? How do they, that mix in? And it's very, very clear. And to, to beautifully transition into this subject, considering what we were just talking about, if you consider the last time the Creator really got angry with his people and caused it to rain for 40 days and 40 nights, it was because of the genetic manipulation of the population, the Bible says it was the Nephilim, the fallen angels, or the Herculeans, the supermen, were coming into the daughters of men, changing the genetics. That means they were having sex with the daughters of normal terrestrial human beings and changing the genes. And the Creator says, I'm not going to deal with this anymore, and he made it rain. Now, study the Bible, and you'll see that's the case, and that you'll see that the Nephilim outlived the flood. 